Fire Emblem Engage is full of tactical encounters and challenging missions. And thanks to the addition of powerful emblem rings that imbue your team with the power of legendary heroes, there's more strategy to consider than ever before. From making the most of your new hub base, to managing your special rings and using new tricks to turn the tide on the battlefield, we've got plenty of tips to make you a master tactician and take down the fell dragon. <laughs> Check the map carefully for where the blue spots are that charge your emblem. If enemies are nearby, it could be a good spot to unleash the emblem ring's power and wipe them out before getting a free recharge once you take hold of that area. If the mission splits your team up into more than one location, be sure to pay attention to personal skills when dividing groups. If a unit's skill activates near Alir, male, or female units, try to have them advance close to each other. Money can sometimes be hard to come by in Fire Emblem Engage, but you'll increase your funding by helping out different nations. Spend this money wisely, and consider investing in those same nations to increase the rate of silver or gold skirmishes to take on, and gain more money from these fights. If you're not sure who you want on your team, the nobles of each nation are a good pick. Each heir and their sibling cover a wide variety of roles, and each have unique classes they can promote into. After you get a new emblem ring, you can imbue special properties of that emblem onto one specific weapon. Since it only costs a bit of bond fragments to do, be sure to take advantage of increased damage, crit, or avoidance by imbuing your best weapons and swapping them in as needed. Was that too much? Early Paralog side missions can often let you recruit new characters, and should be done sooner rather than later. You'll start unlocking more side missions later in the game, but these more difficult challenges will allow you to raise the max bond levels of your emblem rings, so undertake them when your characters are hitting the max level for that emblem. Since you'll gain emblem rings slowly over the course of the game, be sure to create a set of bond rings to equip on other characters you take into the field. Not only do they get stat bonuses and possible skills from certain S rank rings, but you'll also gain skill points to eventually inherit skills later on. If you cook the right food with a unit who's skilled at the recipe and add extra ingredients, there's a good chance you'll earn leftover food to take into battle. Don't forget to equip it in someone's inventory or you may forget about it. Shall we have a cup of tea afterward? You can only have your unit spar a certain amount of times each visit to the Somniel, so try and top off units close to leveling, or those that are trailing behind in your main team. The opponent and their equipped item will be random, and may even be an emblem, but you can at least ensure your selected unit has their best item equipped before starting a match. Effective use of the weapon triangle can break an enemy's weapon, but not always. You'll need to at least deal damage and have a certain amount of strength and build compared to the opponent, so look for the red X icon to ensure your weapon will actually break theirs. Was that sufficient? Healers are far more formidable than in previous Fire Emblem games, thanks to their martial arts abilities that can also break tomes, bows, and knives. Don't be afraid to send them in to stagger enemies before sending in your other units to finish them off. <laughs> Enemy healers love to use Chain Guard to nullify your initial attacks, especially on bosses. However, they can only do so if the healer is at full health so use area of effect attacks, or even quick attacks from weaker units while saving your strong hits for when the boss is vulnerable. For peace. Staves have many uses. Don't forget to equip different types, or use Alir's Convoy to pull one out if you need it. From healing to warping or debuffing, they can turn the tide when used at the right time. Daggers used by thieves and wolf knights will poison opponents to lower their stats, up to three times. So try to use them first on tougher units or bosses so the rest of the team can benefit. Just make sure the daggers deal at least one point of damage, or they'll be immune to the poison too. Defensive tiles like forts, healing tiles, and cover are important, and can be hard to assault when enemies hold them. Remember that heavier items like great axes and blades can shove enemies off these tiles, letting the rest of your allies attack them while vulnerable. I fight for my friends. Grant me 
strength and victory! When you engage with an emblem, you'll often gain access to unique weapons that you may not have been able to use otherwise with that unit. Certain special moves may also be limited to these weapon types, so be mindful of which weapons you can and can't use while merged with an emblem. Almost as important as pairing up the right unit with an emblem is figuring out which skills you'll want that unit to eventually inherit from other emblems. Since inherited skills cannot stack with your equipped emblem skills, you should plan to either swap out emblems to build bonds or undergo training at the Somniel in exchange for bond fragments to quickly unlock skills from other emblems to inherit that complement the skills you've gained from the equipped emblem. It's not explained very well, but the costs for skills with multiple ranks will account for previous ranks you've already purchased. For example, Lin's Alacrity skill costs 1,000 SP and 2,000 for Alacrity Plus. But if you've already purchased the first tier, the second will be deducted to 1,000 SP. Therefore, you should always buy the early ranks of skills if possible as you slowly build up your skill points for that unit. Yes, enemies can utilize the power of emblem rings too in certain missions. And unlike your emblem rings, theirs don't run out of power. Always keep an eye on the position of enemy emblem rings and make note of the abilities they confer so you don't get ambushed by their powerful attacks. You can also try pairing up emblems to have units fulfill roles they wouldn't normally cover. For example, Emblem Makaya will let any unit equip a staff regardless of their type and Celica will even unlock an infinite use recovery staff at a certain level. With these tips, you're now ready to wreck shop in Fire Emblem Engage. Who's your favorite classic hero from Fire Emblem's past? Make sure to let us know in the comments below, and while you're here, check out our review of Fire Emblem Engage. And for everything else gaming, you're already in the right place. IGN.